uh, after construction management i think you all uh, enjoyed this session because i was not uh, talking from the curriculum it is i was sharing my experience uh, likewise today we will see the quality management uh, uh, which is uh, quality and safety it goes hand in hand in any project if you have both this quality and safety systems in place i think uh, that takes care of the project uh, completion on time also uh, i that i will explain uh, in uh, upcoming slides uh, to start with it is uh, instruction before execution at work site observation during execution and post inspection comments and rectifications by the contractor this is what i am going to talk with you today because you might have read about quality you might have read about uh, safety but when it comes to actual execution at site what are all the uh, challenges we have or what are all the things we need to take care uh, right from day one okay as you all have uh, any project we have stakeholders like uh, project owner management is there there will be four kinds of managements in any uh, construction site or any infrastructure site or any project site one is the project owner management and the supervision management the contractor the actual contractor who had taken the work uh, that uh, contractor construction contractor management and general contractor management the general contractor is the person who uh, suppose let us assume there is a, uh, a industrial park we are developing one general contractor will be there and that contractor will execute uh, the work in association with many subcontractors he will engage his own subcontractors for uh, if it is an industrial park it will be having industrial building it will have uh, commercial or office building uh, it may have roads it may have drainages it may have electrical work it may have plumbing work uh if in view it may have a effluent treatment plant or common stp uh, sewage treatment plant all these kind of activities will be there in one single project the contractor will tend to uh, or he need to appoint subcontractors because he may not be well versed with all these kind of work the general contractor will be appointing subcontractor so there are four stakeholders four managements involved one is the project owner the real client is management the supervision management that is the project managers like you and me we, who will be engaged to overall supervision and the project managers and construction contractor and general contractor these four four uh, management systems will be there in any site okay now let us see what will happen if each one of them fail or if each one of them do it in a proper way so if the project owner management what he needs to take care the project manager uh, and what will happen if he has an unclear distribution of responsibilities among all parties lack of inspection of commencement permit and qualification examination fail to coordinate the project quality progress and cost targets these are all the areas where the uh, real uh, the client has to take care that is inadequate management uh, this uh, poor quality testing because the client is the most important person for whom we are doing this project and he also need to be very very careful right from choosing the contractor the first thing where quality fails is in choosing the contractor unless always you choose a pro pro right contractor for right job that starts the issue and second thing is he also should have a mind uh, to get the best of the materials that is the quality material at site and to coordinate uh, for the project uh, that is for the quality the first thing second thing is if the supervision management that is you and me that is the project consultants or project managers if we fail what will happen the supervision department is not staffed adequately there is an issue and if you have uh, something other than that see all this i will uh, all the this thing i will uh, open it up and you can see uh, the supervision department is not staffed adequately some supervision have not received pre job training that is 
if you don't orient them if though if you don't brief them the kind of work and what is that you are expecting last uh, session itself we were discussing that we need to orient the uh, labor uh, engineers who are now coming to the site to uh, explain them the role and responsibilities and their scope all this we need to do on site wrong operations are not corrected timely if anything goes wrong it should be immediately corrected if we fail to do that again there will be quality issue work and quality control are not in place in many many a times this is the issue what happens it is because of the uh, uh, project managers uh, like you and me so the inadequate supervision happens only because of uh, because of whom because of the project managers suppose there is a improper imperfect project department management this is the construction contractor also need to have his own management team whatever instruction you and me are giving uh, who is going to execute the contractor is going to execute the supervision manager may take care of everything but where again it goes wrong the construction contractors managers or the general contractors managers if these both, both people the general contractor is the person who has taken the work in toto he should maintain a, a great uh, relationship between the safety development uh, that is the quality agency and the safety agency he has to maintain a very good relationship and if he fail to deploy uh, and organize regular production inspection that is every uh, now and then a uh, course correction is the most important thing and post correction is very very difficult in any construction so it is pre instruction and course correction uh, to avoid post corrections which takes time and money okay and failed supervision rectification which is merely a form the, and failed to establish a perfect matching management system this matching management system in the sense here the matching management system uh means he, the managerial people of the contractor should have adequate knowledge about safety quality and about the other contractors quality team because if they have three four subcontractors each of them will have their own safety team and their own quality team and he should have adequate knowledge or he has to import knowledge with them also, to them also and to match uh you has to match them for your requirement and uh, the uh, last but not the least the emergency plan is not perfect if there is no emergency plan in place and the examination and approval system is not standardized uh, every time you cannot have a different parameter or different certification uh, idea there should be a system more than the people run the organization the system should run the organization that to the construction side if we have systems in place right from the beginning for quality audit and for safety audit the system will take care rest of the activities if you allow the people to take decision time to time and to change their decisions change their way of certification way of testing then it leads to unwanted complication this is the overall chart i just wanted to give you and the, the when i make the flow i think the flow was missing somewhere and i will correct it and send it across to you all okay next uh, now these are all the three main aspects in quality inspection and test plans how to write them and how to use them mere recording is not going to solve the quality issue we have to inspect we have to inspect before inspection that is before the work start we should see that they are following our instructions properly by that we can avoid the uh, quality issues at a later stage then inspection and test this is test is for the material and inspection is during the course of construction and how to write them and in despite your instruction there are possibilities for mistakes because after all we have humans at site few may fail to adhere to our instruction or by ironically it may happen 
so you have to record it how to write them that is most important thing in quality and how to use this uh, record that is once you recorded it and it is not just to punish the contractor or to find fault it is this record will help you to avoid these kind of quality issues over a period of time both the contractor and you will be aware that that this mistake had happened because of such and such reason so in the future we will not have such a quality issue okay this is what we need to do then the introduction to uh, this thing see there are you have to introduce them to the key concept and make them to understand the importance and project life cycle is most important uh, for them to understand and quality and completion of the project uh, till completion the project intro introduction of key concepts contractors take clients requirements and turn them into something tangible uh, this i need not explain you probably it might be uh, might have been taught to you in uh, college itself process involves thousands of activities long time period how does the client verify that they are getting and that they are paid for okay so purpose key concepts and definitions are the three things what you need to understand and what is quality completions client has uh, contracted us to complete a project that everyone knows and verification validation process proves original requirement satisfied we need to satisfy uh we need to satisfy the client with the best of the quality possible okay that is most important thing and additional requirements to hand over with the client the additional requirement in the sense that the client might have uh, might have certain things uh in mind or which we discussed uh, during the before the uh, tender was awarded to a contractor that also need to be taken care of quality is the pro uh, key project outcome whichever be the project appointing a project management consultant or a project manager is for only two reasons to get a quality output uh, the desired quality output quality a very person to person uh, that is client to client and project to project but the desired quality need to be uh, delivered deliverable is bro broken into two things that is quality uh, is one thing and completion on time that uh, in fact we have uh, we discussed it earlier also so how do we prove we satisfied the client's requirements so ne we need to understand it is a triangle the uh, the main thing is the scope cost time and quality quality is the uh, uh, ingredient and to achieve that without compromising on the cost time and scope just to give a quality product neither you can increase the cost nor you can see that the project overrun so we need to be very very careful even uh, to give 100% quality we should not increase the estimated cost nor we delay the project beyond the timeline scheduled and without compromising the scope so these three we need to keep in mind and client's requirements we all know design and specifications done by an architect and that need, uh, that cannot be compromised and the project need to be uh, commissioned at desired timeline after completion uh, sorry Give me a minute. One minute. One minute. I'll be back. The client requirement is. it should be as per the design and specification given by the consultant it may be you or a architect appointed by him and completion of the project uh, on time and commissioning completion is different and commissioning is different that we will uh, uh, 
after completion you need to get the completion certificate you need to get all the statutory uh, approvals uh, for occupying the building or for using the building for the purpose for which it's been designed okay so uh, now the definitions of quality completion and commissioning what does mean quality what does mean completion and what does mean commissioning so let us go one by one quality the degree to which inherent characteristics fulfills the requirement as i said before uh, the quality desired quality quality in the sense it is the desired quality there are so many buildings with different quality same kind of a building may have the same character may might have been designed for the same purpose but every client needs a different kind of a quality uh, but the basic quality of any building building material or the construction practice cannot be compromised but the quality of material uh, depends upon the budget at times it varies and the methodology the quality for different technologies is different uh, and ensuring construction and insulation complies with the design the design quality your quality in the sense it is not only the material not only the band power quality not only the quality of the machinery and the construction practice the quality of construction practice is also uh, very 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 important the definition of quality is that and completions completing and handing over of the project there are commercial practical partial and full handover uh, you might have seen uh, some projects which may take uh, 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 let us assume an industrial park the uh, uh, completion of the uh, total uh, industrial park may be after five years but it doesn't mean that the project should suffer till that time the investment should suffer uh, at that time so there will be some commercial opening or soft opening soft inauguration or phase wise they may be handing over the park so the commercial is the first thing that is if, if they have some trading activity the trading activity will be uh, inaugurated first or completed and commissioned first then practical practical uh, in the sense uh, the part of the industry uh, which uh, the core industry may not be started that the entire park will not be inaugurated but certain activities which uh, needs uh, to cooperate with the, the trading can be uh, completed at the second phase and partial full and then you are handing over so this this means that on a phase wise you are completing giving it and at the last you are going to commission it but all these definitions relate to construction completions uh, because uh, completion of a project is the most important thing and commissioning is I think something is wrong with the and excuse me. Commissioning specific type of quality control activity. As we discussed, every uh, client, every uh, building has a different kind of a quality and that kind of quality control activity is required and system are tested against uh, one is the system whatever uh, you are implementing the systems are tested against one is in the sense before commissioning you may have so many you may have a gen set you may have a stp plant you have so many other allied activities uh, to make the project perfect the infrastructure perfect and these kind of systems are to be tested in the presence of the uh, owner and it should match with the requirements uh, the original requirement of the owners also and applicable to mechanical electrical plumbing uh, plumbing fire and control system this means uh, uh, you have to get the compliances from the electrical department from fire department uh, from pollution control board there are so many such statutory requirements are there uh, only when you complete all this 
uh, you, uh, it, it can be called as commissioning. So the quality of a building, not only uh, with the material, uh, manpower, and the machinery, or the design, it also needs uh, the right kind of statutory approvals in place. This is also part of the uh, quality of a building. Because there may be buildings uh, which cannot be put into real use because they may uh, it may lack with these kind of approvals. So these kind of approvals, the statutory approvals also part of the uh, quality. So inspection and test plans, how to write them as we already discussed. Now let us see. Uh, uh, this is a brief uh, introduction I had given about quality. Quality is not only uh, men, material and machinery and the design. It also uh, construction, completion and commissioning. Now, in most of the sites, they have all kind of testing equipments. And all the materials arrive at site are randomly tested only when it match with the uh, specification or with the referred uh, uh, standards or as per IS only allowed to be used at site. Despite that, why there are quality issues in uh, buildings? I'll give you two, three examples now. <coughs> what are all the uh, quality issues and safety issues we will be facing at site uh, for very, very, very simple, negligible reasons. Uh, before that, I will tell you, uh, this is an approval from Government Institute for what? The aggregates. The cement, this is a uh, report of design mix proportion. This is a design mix. We are using uh, uh, M40 grade concrete and for which this is a uh, design mix uh, report. Okay, so you cannot, uh, no one will have any doubt on the quality of uh, M40 grade. Okay, now the cubes are also tested for what? Seven days, what is the uh, strength it attained? And in 28 days, what is the maximum strength? The particular, every batch of concrete placed at site. Now we are using concrete from batching plant. And batching plants, and it is a design mix. So the design mix has already been uh, approved and uh, then you are getting it from the batching plant and every batch uh, when the concrete reaches at site uh, we get a cube, cube test. That is every concrete, every batch is uh, tested for its quality. Okay. And this is uh for the reinforcement the test report for the reinforcement okay and the water is also tested they are testing the what we uh, every site has a laboratory for the building materials and it is also tested this is fine aggregate coarse aggregate and water report for fine aggregate and coarse aggregate and cement is also been tested at site. And cement, after testing at site, we are getting a third party report from an accredited lab. Any ABL accredited lab, we are getting a certificate for that. And this, uh, this is compaction test once, uh, this is at the uh, substructure. Once the substructure is raised, there will be basement filling. That basement filling, uh, they are doing a core cutting. These are all the quality tests, what happens at site. And this is uh, self-compact concrete, the slump test. They are doing the slump test also at site. I, why I am showing all these things? Despite all this, we have quality issues. I will be coming to that. Before that, I am telling you, every site, not only in the CSAPL site, every consultant, every contractor has all these facilities 
at their site. The cubes are tested for every batch. Where every batch of concrete comes to the ready mix concrete comes to site immediately from each batch there uh, they take eight to ten cubes the, these cubes are tested at the seventh day 14th day 21st day and 28th day to uh, understand the way in which it attains the strength okay now concrete cube test results are also at the site they do it and they get a third party approval also and despite all this now we are coming to the real issues <coughs> we have done all the tests all the materials are uh, to our required uh, quality and all the uh, design mixes uh, to our required quality despite that here at this side you can see here could you see the welding here? We all know when you lack reinforcement, there is a certain requirement. What is the requirement? 40D. The uh, It should be 40 times of the dia of the uh, rod. Am I right? But you can see the problem here. Yeah, the uh, steel they bought it from the best of the supplier and it tested for its quality the cement tested for its quality the concrete is tested for its quality uh, coarse aggregate fine aggregate water everything is perfect but where is the issue now where the quality issue comes now the quality issue is in the construction practice the, it, it makes a concrete, it makes this particular structure weak because of inadequate lab length, isn't it? So this, again rectified, we made, the, the project manager made them to replace and then they are going to place the concrete. So this is the most important thing. If we, uh, by oversight, missed this or if the supervisor who was looking after this work if he is not having adequate knowledge about the lab length it may look a very very small uh, mistake or it may be out of negligence or out of oversight if, if we allows them to uh, pour the concrete it is a irreparable quality issue over a period of time okay this is one mistake uh, and it was rectified because it was cited well before pouring of concrete let us go to the next this kind of a issue what will happen and this is a my bond structure okay the first photograph shows you the once the uh, shutter was uh, placed the contractor was instructed to fix additional uh, this thing props to avoid bulging because it the length of uh, this uh, uh, my one structure is more or it may ha have some kind of a uh, long used or may, it is uh, because of it is more number of repeated use it would have lost its character so the, the supervisor instructed him to give a uh, extra prop uh, to support it from bulging but the contractor didn't result, uh, listen and what had happened post inspection when they inspected there is a bulging okay now it got rectified but at whose cost and at what time this is not only the quality issue it again time consuming definitely the concrete will not have the same strength it's supposed to have uh, without any disturbance am i right so and to rectify this the cost again uh, we used uh, some admixture 
some chemicals and the manpower it's a burden on the contractor and it is burden on the client because of time overrun and it won't give the exact satisfaction what uh, the structure would have given to the uh, client so because of this the contractor would have not made any savings the contractor in uh, rather incurred loss only or extra expense on this particular item of work so uh, the quality issues are like this only we need to make need to make the contractor and his team to understand that failing in quality is going to cost him his fortune because he would have in this particular item of work he would have lost 10 to 12 percent uh, of the expense of this particular item and his profit may be 15 to 20 percent if he loses 15 percent uh, no contract will have the uh, morale to continue the work so we have to the construction practice is most important thing and we as project managers uh, either uh, if you supervise on your own or engage a supervisor please orient them the construction practice is the most important aspect in quality issues and next i'll uh, show you uh, the other kind of an issue this is when the concrete before uh, uh, laying the concrete the alignment of props and a bottom support uh, despite the instruction by the uh, construction uh, manager or the site engineer or the supervisor the contractor didn't listen this is the location where they wanted them to give extra support it was not listened what happened this is what happened And now, so the entire thing, they chipped off. How much of material waste? How we are damaging the uh, uh, structure and bringing down the, uh, this thing now it is after completion. So the time, uh, money, and compromising the strength of the, Concrete. This is another classical example. Again, see, even when things happen wrong with my one uh, structure, uh, think of other structures because here it is totally uh, monolithic. Uh, if you ca fix it for one floor, you are just lifting it for other floors, and uh, even in this. If you have these kind of quality issues, uh, in conventional concrete, there will be a lot of such mistakes because of construction practice, not because of material, not because of uh, uh, design. It is purely because of uh, construction practice. Now, again, you see here, this is the thing, and the bulge. and the whole thing chipped off and rectified for plumb. So yeah, the quality issue could be rectified, but what is the use? See, this is biggest, this thing. See how much of concrete and you, uh, you could see the uh, reinforcement also. So this particular wall is losing its cover. The concrete cover will not be there. But once you plaster it, no one is going to notice it. But you, are, uh, you know that what is the kind of problem we had undergone. And uh, this is actually a construction flaw. again here 
See, there is no adequate soldiers. That is support. Uh, it is on the uh, external side of the wall. Here you can see it's not properly fixed. Uh, you can see the alignment. Here it is aligned properly and it is not here. It is in line, but it is not in line. And again, the same way here also. And what is the, this thing? What had happened? See how shabby it is and it is outer wall. Uh, and being a my one structure, we are not going to plaster it. So how could you finish it? Now we chipped off everything and again it's been plastered. It's time and money. And here again you see, this is the alignment you can uh, see the shutters are not placed in line. Could you see this? The entire length. It's a matter of 10 minutes. If they rectified it, they would have avoided two days, three days of uh, correction work. And now, this is here like this. See. And the rectification. Even after rectification, uh, the undulations could not be corrected in total. Uh, this will, uh, see the mistake of an engineer will stand and kill them, unlike any other profession. If a doctor does a mistake, it can be buried. The mistake can be buried. Uh, but if an engineer does a mistake, it will stand and kill them. So we cannot afford to do a mistake like this. Here, in my one searches, we used to keep this kind of tie rod. And the tie rod need to be removed as soon as the shuttering is removed. And it needs to be grouted uh, for waterproofing. Uh, in spite of our instructions, the contractor didn't do it. What had happened after painting? See the dampness exposed the quality. So these are all the quality issues what we face at site. And this is a uh, very, very, very silly mistake. Uh, this one, could you see the quality of the shuttering sheet? And what had happened? The concrete spilled out of the shutter. So these kind of uh, things we should not allow. So now let us uh, come to the last portion of the thing. Uh, quality control and safety during construction. Uh, there are so many concerns about it. Uh, we need to organize a team for quality and for safety. Uh, work and material specifications, of course, we discussed. That is the first thing what we need to take care of work and material specification and total quality control the all the slides i had shown you now uh, in spite of the best of the materials in spite of best of the workforce in spite of best of the design why we failed there is no total quality control uh, everything is fine but for the construction practice so we cannot compromise on any of the aspect in quality. Quality, uh, it is a system uh, need to be followed. Quality control by statistical method. I think uh, statistical quality control with sampling by attributes. Uh, this is just for information I am telling. Uh, this alone will not, this statistical quality you had seen. All the quality parameters were taken care. Uh, but what had happened? we found there are so many uh, unacceptable uh, mistakes because of small, small things, small negligence. Okay, so statistical quality alone is not, uh, uh, so we will not support. And quality control and safety represent increasingly important concerns for project managers. 
uh, on seeing all these slides, you also will accept that uh, you have to be 100% vigilant. You cannot uh, afford to do a, a small mistake also, which lead to a biggest uh, this thing. Defects or failures in construction facilities can result in very large costs. That, that's what. And every, even with minor defects, reconstruction may require and facility operations impaired. Increased costs and delays are the result. In the worst case, failures may cause personal injuries or fatalities. Uh, I tell you, when they are doing the course correction, see, uh, I had sh uh, shown you one of the slides where the external uh, my one shattering was not properly fixed. Uh, due to that, there was a bulge in the external wall uh, which need to be finished properly. After removing the my one uh, shutter, again on a my one wall, uh, building a scaffolding to 8th level or 10th uh, level, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job. And again, if it is not properly done, the scaffolding is not properly done. Think of the labor's uh, fate. Suppose anything goes wrong, you will fall from that height. Because the contractors will not take all safety measures during the repair works. During the construction, they take all kinds of precautions and they provide all kinds of safety uh, uh, elements. But when it is repair work, it is an additional work for them. It is a burden for them. They don't give the same kind of care when they build the scaffolding and on the safety of the labor. And which will be a very big uh, loss both uh, by time and by life. With the attention to conformance uh, as the measure of quality during the construction process, the specification of quality requirement in the design and contract documentation becomes extremely important. Uh, friends, you all had seen that we have all kind of quality parameters filled. Any contractor for that matter will keep all the quality parameters in place, but they fail only in the construction practice. Quality requirements should be clear and verifiable so that all parties in the project can understand the requirements of for conformance. Yeah, the most important thing is the, when it comes to quality, all the stakeholders, uh, as we discussed during construction management session, all the stakeholders, right from the client to the uh, last person, they should know what quality means at this particular site. Uh, what is the quality of uh, uh, cement to fine aggregate to uh, quality design to quality finish up to quality finish everyone should uh, be on the same page and organizing for quality and safety a variety of different organizations are possible for quality and safety control during construction uh, and uh, unless otherwise you have a, a team not one person or two person, you need a team uh, for the you know, large scale projects uh, to uh, have 100% uh, quali deliverable quality, to have 100, to uh, provide 100% deliverable quality or desired uh, quality. So one common model is to have a group responsible for quality assurance and another group primarily responsible for safety within an organization. Because the quality and safety guys cannot be the same people because safety uh, team needs different kind of uh, role to play and uh, the quality assurance people has a different kind of uh, role to play. Uh, in large organization, department dedicated to quality assurance and to safety might assign specific individual to assume responsibility for these functions on particular projects. This I can give you uh, uh, examples. See, there are people uh, in a safety team 
internal safety they have people for internal safety in the sense once the construction started and when it's going up uh, there will be sequential works uh, and there will be parallel activities in the parallel when parallel activities are happening there will be construction team working inside the building and different agencies will be working electrical team may be working plumbing team may be working and hvac team may be working and the masons may be working inside and likewise outside there will be a plastering team a finishing team they will also be working on the outside so uh, the team uh, should comprise people who has expertise in uh, the, the safety team uh, who has expertise in electrical uh, plumbing uh, safety in electrical and plumbing uh, and you need guys who have experience in scaffolding if uh, they should have thorough knowledge about the scaffolding what uh, makes the scaffolding fail he should have a uh, knowledge about it and you need uh, other safety guy the team leader should have experience about all these things and he should delegate uh, his team members accordingly who can be the right person for which uh, to oversee which uh, area that is also most important and like the same way the quality guys also everybody may not be good with all the works uh, the quality standards for electrical work the quality standard for a plumbing work uh, is different and uh, the quality standard for uh, uh, concrete and other things are different so the guy who is well versed uh, with the other thing that is plumbing and electrical should be deployed for that and the guy who is good uh, uh, in concrete and uh, design should be deployed accordingly and for smaller project the project manager or an assistant might assume these and other responsibilities in small projects when we start with if it is a residential building uh, if it is a small complex uh, the client or the contractor or ourselves may, we may not be in a position to uh, appoint more people because the project cost may be less uh, so the uh, then you should have one project manager and an assistant who can take care of everything who has the knowledge uh, in taking care of all these things so the traditional quality control practices is the notion of an acceptable quality level which is uh, allowable fraction of defective items so the here i differ uh, the, instead of quality control instead of quality control it is uh, the desired quality because we should deliver the desired quality is the right uh, approach i would say uh, work and material specification construction specifications normally consist of a series of instructions or prohibitions for specific operations for example uh, the illustrations you can see uh, conform to elevations and dimensions uh, shown on a plan within a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.10 foot and extending a sufficient distance from footings and foundations to permit placing and removal of concrete work installation of services other construction and for inspection uh, how many of you are very con uh, conversant with the tamil i don't know there is a tamil proverb uh, in the uh, uh, construction industry that is the masons ella pesra bodu solvanga nalla meestrike 4 inch munna pinna abdin solittu a good mason uh, will complete the building uh, with plus or minus 4 inches error so uh, that's what it says conform to elevations and dimensions shown on plan with the tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.10 foot and extending a sufficient distance from footings and foundations to permit placing and removal of concrete form work installation of services other construction and for inspection this you will understand once you are at the construction site see you should have enough tolerance and uh, the when you make dimensions when they do this thing there is a possibility for plus or minus uh, zero point uh, here uh, they call in one zero foot they say 
you can say the uh, uh, one centimeter this way or that way, there is a possibility for error. In excavating of our footings, foundations take care to disturb bottom excavation. Uh, normally, not to disturb bottom of excavation. Uh, once you uh, attain the uh, hard data recommended by the geotechnical consultant. See, for different uh, building, uh, there is a different kind of foundation design. And for different soil, there is a different kind of foundation design. And when you attain the adequate value of the soil uh, hardness, don't disturb the bottom of excavation further. You leave it as it is. And just before, uh, then you start your, just trim it. And use it as it is. At times when you, uh, uh, disturb it, it get, the foundation gets disturbed. During the construction process, the most important safety uh, measure are to ensure vigilance and cooperation on the part of managers, inspectors and workers. The, this happens only when there is a harmony between uh, the project management team, contracting team, uh, unless otherwise you have a harmony, more, most of the time the instructions are neglected. So, and uh, where the quality and safety uh, is at stake uh, means the site where there is no harmony between the uh, management team, that is project management team and the contractor team. Vigilance involves considering the risk of different working practices as we discussed earlier. Uh, every other technology, construction technology, needs a different kind of uh, construction practice and uh, that decides the quality and we need people uh, to monitor with uh, adequate knowledge of that particular uh, practice. It also involves maintaining temporary physical safeguards and as uh, this you all know, uh, in all, all the sites, uh, the physical safeguards in the sense of the net, barricades, braces, guidelines, guidelines uh, and the safety belts, railings, tow boats, all these are very, very essential. I think all this you might have read in your uh, book also. So requiring hard cats on site, requiring eye protection, uh, requiring uh, hearing protection uh, near loud equipment, ensuring safety shoes for workers. Uh, the, all these things may look very, very uh, small, but uh, a hat can save a person. Uh, the eye can be saved because of a goggle. And the ear, uh, hearing protection, if a guy is exposed to a lot of sound, uh, I think you uh, will be you will become a hearing impact. So these small, small things may look very small, but uh, it, the cause of this will be very, very big. So we have to be very careful uh, at sight and we should impart training to our people and make them understand uh, how uh, vigil they should be uh, as far as safety is concerned. And providing first aid supplies and trained personnel on site. We can train one of the, um, from different groups, we can train one one person uh, on uh, uh, first aid supplies and train them to give first aid immediately uh, if uh, for small wounds and before taking them for uh, treatment. As with all other cause of construction, it is a mistake for owners to ignore a significant category of cause such as injury and illness. See, uh, in last session we were dis uh, discussing about uh, direct expenses and indirect expenses in the uh, project. Most of the time, these direct expenses are taken into account and uh, the indirect expenses uh, for safety. Uh, it, it is not only uh, providing the safety precautions, it is not only providing safety equipments, it is not only providing uh, first aid or medical uh, facility, it also includes the insurance for the uh, employees. 
the insurance for all the workers at site is most in essential thing uh, because if anything goes wrong we need not repent and it, it it is not an expense it is a investment in the uh, project we have to take it in that way delays caused by injuries and illness can present significant opportunity cost to owners in the long run the owners of construction facilities must pay the cost of construction so uh, as we uh, as i told you it is also part of the construction cost it is not an other expense for the case of injuries and in so however uh, this uh, i think this is relevant now the uh, uh, court judgment and all and uh, thank you so much uh, and i tell you uh, as far as quality and safety uh, more than we uh, study it's out of experience uh, only you can uh, learn but where whichever site they have proper uh, system for quality and safety uh, the quality is also assured and the safety of the employees also been taken care so i wish you all the very best and uh, please visit uh, the sites uh, at construction that is uh, one or two tower buildings by that you will understand uh, the real quality issues happening at site and what are all the lacuna in uh, the best of the sites also have uh, safety issues it is because of mere ignorance or uh, the owners ignore the instructions uh, by uh, the project managers and even the projects done by government the government uh, uh, the engineers from the government also uh, ignore all the safety norms fixed by uh, themselves the government only fixed many safety norms at work site and it's also been uh, not followed at many of the sites i think uh, at least you young engineers who are uh, coming up and taking up project management as your fort please see that from day one the quality uh, in construction practice and safety at site as the two uh, uh, main parameters for best result thank you over to vijay yes sir uh sir uh, we have a yeah, student yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and wants to ask something sir regarding yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah one second <laughs> due to Hello. Yeah, please, please. Sir, I having one query. Uh, yeah, please, please, please. Sir, why why doing a uh, uh, any flaws? Uh, a re reconstruction cost is maybe reflected in a. Planning cost. Sir. I know to come back with the question. Yes, sir. If we do any reworks uh, regarding flaws, uh, it it will affect uh, planning cost, sir. How will you manage that, sir? No, budget. see, uh, yeah, budget, budget, uh, because we uh, it is the negligence of the contractor, uh, uh, and the cost will be borne by the contractor. uh the client is not going to bear the cost isn't it uh, so it is a loss on the contractor not for the, the client okay sir okay uh, that will not affect the overall budget that will affect uh, uh, the profit of the contractor Hello. And to add on that, 
uh, we may be project manager we may work as project manager uh, for a client uh, or for the contractor also when we work for a contractor we should see that uh, the contractor is not getting uh, incur any loss isn't it yes sir yeah next Sir, that's it, sir. Uh, no other questions, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this one, you know, quality and safety. Uh, please uh, try to organize a uh, uh, industry visit. Uh, sure, sir. Even they can come to uh, our site at uh, Varagadam. That is Vallambadikal. Uh, oh. I will also try to come to site on that particular day. And we have our own safety engineers and quality engineers at site, and our vice okay. president is also there. So, uh, uh, whatever today I had shown them uh, in the presentations, they can practically see that at site, uh, and we can explain them even in a better way uh, how that has delayed the project because the schedule, everything is there, and uh, we can have. Response. How many of them are there in the class? Um, 14, 14, sir. Only 14? No, sir. Uh, today there 14. was uh, absent. Okay, yeah. okay. Otherwise, normally, uh, how many of them in this section, sir? How many of them will come? If they all come, we can uh, have one uh, uh, visit for about two to three hours. Uh, and uh, after that, we can have a deliberation. Instead of class kind of a thing, we can have uh, uh, discussions. They will come out with a lot of doubts, definitely, after seeing them. Okay, okay, sir. So okay. Quality and safety teaching is very difficult, sir. It is at site only, we can show them okay. uh, how it affects. Exactly, yes. Okay, okay, sir. And, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, tell me, sir. Uh, sir, uh, we have to complete this uh, nine hours uh, within this uh, month, sir. I just uh, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll plan one day, sir, uh, like you said. Uh, maybe next okay, week. Uh, now it is three hours over. I have to do another for six hours. Yes, sir. The next topic also you tell me, sir, and we will do that. Well, now let us finish this and uh, we'll uh, have a discussion over phone, sir. I'll call you. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Shall I close this meeting, sir? Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.